Welcome, this is John Epps. I'm with the Texas A&M Transportation Institute at Texas A&M University. And I'm Dennis Berryhill, the statewide seal coat coordinator for TexDOT, uh, and I work for the maintenance division. Today we're gonna to talk about one of the seal coat briefs that's available to you folks. It's brief number 20-15. It has to do with chip spreader calibration. This brief can be located on one of two websites. One website is for TxDOT employees only. It's shown at the top of this slide. And the other website is available to all users. And that's the TexAPA website, at texasasphalt.org, uh, with additional information to uh, locate these briefs. Together with the brief, you'll also find PowerPoints that accompany the briefs, and you'll find a video of this recording. The video of the recording has accompanying slide programs in a PowerPoint format that we'll be using today for our presentations. We're gonna to talk today uh, about spread rates of aggregates, conversion of weights to volumes associated with these spread rates, calibration methods for determining the spread rates of aggregates, and quality control during construction. We will then summarize the entire presentation. Chip spreaders go by several names in field crews and uh, conversations amongst engineers and technicians. We also call them aggregate spreaders, spreader boxes, aggregate distributors, chip distributors as well. Item 316, the specification for seal coats and TxDOT specifications, has section 4.9, which identifies that we should apply the aggregates in a uniform manner, both longitudinally and transversely. We have to apply aggregates at the directed rate, the directed spread rate, and we need to apply aggregates without rock rollover during the construction process. The transverse rate uniformity is designated as one pounds per square yard. That is, as you go transversely across the direction of spread, we cannot vary by more than one pound per square yard. And we'll talk about how one could check that during construction. The importance of calibration of a chip spreader has to do with making sure that we get the aggregate spread rate as designated by the engineer. We need to determine the uniformity of this spread rate as just talked about. We need to maintain that aggregate spread rate during the construction process, during the entire construction process. And we need to determine quantities of aggregates that are gonna be utilized for payments on these particular projects. So all of this is important from a calibration point of view. Dennis is gonna talk about the spread rates of aggregates to get the topic introduced. Thank you, Dr. Epps. We're gonna look at some spread rates and, and, and a few different aggregates. Uh, as you see right here, we have three different spread rates of the same aggregate, and this is a grade four rock. Uh, if you look at the first picture, it shows a theoretical spread rate or design rate, and it is set at one cubic yard to 126 square yards as determined on the board test. If you look at the middle picture, it says typical spread rate. This is probably what you are going to want to have once you get in the field. You see you have some voids, uh, but but the coverage looks very well, and this is probably what you're gonna settle on and shoot. If you look at the last picture, it shows a spread rate of one cubic yard to 165 square yards, and this is obviously too light. So if you have something like this, you're probably gonna to wanna to heavy this up uh, and, and, and retry uh, your, your spread rate to make sure you have something that is visually pleasing. So, we're gonna talk a little bit about that theoretical spread rate or that design rate uh, and why we may have different rates in the field. So these are both grade four aggregates, two different sources. The one on the top is thinner and has more flaky particles. So it, you're gonna end up with a lot more coverage from less rock or from a cubic yard of rock than you would on the aggregate shown below. It's more chunky and, and a bigger aggregate, even though it fits the grade four gradation, so it's gonna take more rock to get you the same look or desired squ uh, square yard. Just remember the aggregate spread rate on the plans is for estimate, estimating only. Uh, you're not gonna know exactly which source you're gonna use while you're putting your plans together. So it's very important to discuss once the sources are identified, run these tests, run these board tests, look at your aggregate, and then have conversations with your contractor 
so you can adjust the amount of aggregate that's actually delivered to the job. Maybe uh, less needed, maybe more needed. But this will, uh, this will put or take care of some issues that you may have at the end of the job with excess rock or needing to get more rock and maybe you can't get it. So have these conversations early because remember, all grade fours are not the same. Now we're gonna look at converting from weight to volume. Uh, this is gonna be used in checking some of these, uh, these like the board test and, and some calibration later on that we will get to. So for this information, we're gonna go back to Dr. John Epps. As Dennis has just indicated, the conversion from weight to volume is, is fairly commonly used uh, in field calculations and in design calculations for chip seal spread rates and determine the quantities of aggregate that you're actually spreading. So we may receive truck, ship, truck shipments on a weight basis. In fact, we often do. The trucks go over a scale. So many tons of aggregate are hauled out to the various stockpiles. We often pay on a cubic yard basis, although one district is paying on a weight basis right now. But the usual payment quantity is on a cubic yard basis. So we have both weights and cubic yards used for different purposes. The design quantities that come out of the modified Kirby method are on a weight basis, the number of pounds that we place on a square yard of aggregate in the laboratory. And then the specification requirements, as Dennis has indicated, are so many cubic yards of aggregate to cover so many square yards of pavement surface. So we have weights and volumes that we have to deal with, and we need to learn to convert from weights to volumes and from volumes to weights. The dry loose unit weight test, Texas method 404A, is utilized to measure the dry loose unit weight of aggregates. And this is an integral part of the whole process. So if we wanted to know the volume of the aggregates in a truck, say in cubic yards, and we knew the amount of weight that was on that truck, that is the weight of the aggregate on the truck in tons, we could use this equation shown before you. It's merely the weight of aggregate in tons times 2,000 pounds per ton to convert tons to pounds and the unit weight that we get from the unit weight test we just discussed. We multiply that unit weight times 27 because there's 27 cubic feet per cubic yard. So the 2,027 are just conversions that we use to get from tons to pounds and from cubic feet to cubic yards. If we have an example here, if we have an aggregate truck that has 23.2 tons of aggregate in it, and the dry elution of weight for the laboratory test is 80.2 pounds per cubic foot, we would take the 23.2 23 tons times 2,000 pounds per ton, divide that by 80.2 pounds per cubic foot, leash unit weight, times 27 cubic feet per cubic yard, and we come out with 21.4 cubic yards. So 23.2 tons of aggregate on a truck has a volume of 21.4 cubic yards when it's in its loose condition. And we can use this to check the amount of aggregate hauled to a project versus the amount of aggregate that is actually used on the project. It is not for pay, it's for information only. We also have conversions. We want to go from volumes of aggregates that may be in a truck or some kind of a vehicle uh, to two tons of aggregate. So this is the equation to use for that. It would be the volume of aggregate in cubic yards in a truck times its unit weight, from that test that we just talked about, times 27 for the conversion of units, divided by 2,000, which is pounds per ton, to get it into tons again. So for an example where we had 10 cubic yards of aggregate in a truck, the unit weight of that aggregate was 80.2 pounds per cubic foot, we could substitute those numbers in that equation and we would end up with 10.83 tons. We can use this conversion into tons to check the legal load limit on trucks, and there's tables that do that in the tax dot procedures. Design quantities, as I mentioned before, come out of the modified Kirby method on the board test. It's a very convenient test to do where you can use the project aggregates. You place the aggregate on a one cubic yard flat surface. Very often we use a half cubic yard or even a quarter cubic yard. Place the aggregate on that and weigh the aggregate that's on that particular surface area. Here you see the 1 to 126, the 1 to 145, and the 1 to 165. That is one cubic yard per 165 square yards of pavement surface that Dennis talked about previously. 
So the board test has 16.5 pounds per square yards of area placed on it. The unit weight is 80.2 pounds per cubic foot that we get from our unit weight measurements. We substitute those quantities into our equation here with proper unit conversion, and we end up with 131 square yards that will be covered by one cubic yard. And this is the conversion, again, from the board test to the rates that we commonly use in specifications and for communications in the field. As you recall, the specification said the transverse rate uniformity had to be within one pound. So that is, as we move across the pavement, the amount of aggregate that we place in a, in a square yard has to be within one pound of the square yard next to that, or one pound of the square yard next to it, et cetera. So if we had a rate of 16.5 pounds per square yard, we would end up with a rate of one to 131. If we had 17.5 pounds in the next square yard of aggregate, or square yard of surface right next uh, to the first, that would come out to be 1 to 124. And if we were down one pound uh, on another side, that would be down to 1 to 139. So it shows the sensitivity of pounds per square yard in terms of numbers that we're used to seeing, that is, square yards per cubic yard. So you can vary from 1 to 124 to 1 to 139 and still be within the specification in this particular case. Calibration methods. Several calibration methods are available to us that we can use to calibrate chip spreaders, and Dennis will talk about those. Thank you, Dr. Epps. So we're gonna talk about some calibration methods. Uh, and first thing we're gonna talk about is haul truck volumes and rock lands. We're also gonna talk about the cloth and scale and then we're gonna talk about the pads. These are gonna be three ways that we can actually help calibrate rock rates. So haul truck volumes and rock lands. First, you need to determine an average aggregate spread rate, both longitudinally and transverse. Like I say, you're probably gonna start with maybe your design rate or the information received from your board test. You're gonna have a volume of aggregate on the, on the truck divided by the square yards of pavement surface covered by one truckload. Now different chip spreader settings can be used to establish very various aggregate rates. And that's what we're gonna to attempt to do here is try to dial in this chip spreader and set it on the proper rate to give us the desired rock rate. So your chip spreader holds aggregate in both front and rear hoppers. So you wanna fill these up, both front and rear, and then you're gonna fill your truck with, with accurately known volume of aggregate. So you're gonna establish the rock land or the volume uh, for the volume of the aggregate in that truck. Then you're gonna spread the aggregate in the truck and stop when the front and the rear hoppers are full or approximately the same as when you started. So you may complete the rock land or you may stop short or you may go over, but you need to determine the actual length of the rock land as compared to the desired length for the design rate. Once you do this, you're gonna calculate the actual spread rate, and if the rock land is short or long as compared to the desired rock rate, you're gonna to want to note the chip spreader settings for the calculated spread rate, change your setting as needed, and repeat the process. Each time, record the chip spreader settings and the rock rates. These are just some pictures of our chip spreaders as they're covering up the asphalt. Here's a view of the back hopper of, of a chip spreader. And like I say, you need to make sure when you're, when you're checking this and are trying to establish a rock rate is make sure that you stay as consistent as possible and have the same amounts of rock left in the front and the rear hopper. Now we're gonna talk a little, about, a little bit about the cloth and scale. You can place a square yard of heavy cloth or canvas, usually these come with a chip spreader, uh, and you can do them in as many locations as you would like. You're gonna spread the aggregate with a chip spreader with a known setting, then you're gonna weigh that amount of aggregate retained on the square yard cloth or, or canvas, and you're gonna use the, the conversions that Dr. Epps talked about previously to check and see if it lines up with a cubic yards per square yard rate that we're after. These are some pictures of using uh, some pads to, to, to get the aggregate 
and then you're going to put them, in this case, they put them in Ziploc bags, use the milk scale to record the weights. Using the pads to determine the longitudinal and transverse distribution of rock, this is used from ASTM method D5624, and it uses rubber pads, and you'll lay these down, spread the aggregate with the chip spreader with the known settings, and then you're going to weigh the amount of rock retained on, on those pads, or it's the same as if you use cloth or canvas. You may need to correct for moisture in the aggregate uh, depending on how long the aggregate's been in the stockpile and what weather conditions you've had. You need to change your chip spreader uh, setting and retry this as needed. So we're going to talk a little bit about QCQA during construction. One of the most important things is to inspect your equipment, both pre-construction and during construction. Uh, each day you should be visually inspecting this equipment during construction, uh, looking for mechanical uh, issues in, in the, the equipment. Uh, you should also check your measurements during con construction and check your truck volumes and your rock lands. You don't have to mark rock lands on every shot, but there are times you need to check this just to make sure that you are still accurate and you're still getting the uh, specified rock rate that you want. Uh, we talked about the uh, calibration process and some things that you can do to double check this. Also, you want to make sure that your loader bucket volumes are heaped up uh, as they load the truck and then we can count our truck loads to get a quantity. So here's some things that you need to look at during construction. Uh, here's some, some issues. If, if we look at the, uh, the bottom left, we look like we probably have a gate problem. It may be stuck too far open. Uh, you can see we kind of have a, a ridge of aggregate right here. It's, it's heavier than other places, so our transverse uniformity is not going to be very good. This could also be uh, due to overflow uh, around the, uh, the, the rubber siding on the back of the chip spreader hopper. A lot of times this will happen on the downhill side. Uh, you may need to replace uh, these rubber pads on the back of the chip spreader. And if you look at the top uh, right-hand picture, this is some con contamination. Uh, you have big chunks of aggregate, it could be millings, uh, just contamination in your, in your stockpile. What this is going to do is it's going to clog up a gate and you're going to end up with little or no aggregate uh, for the area of that gate. So one, you're going to have to patch this but two, it's going to throw off your rock rate. Uh, you can also see a, another issue we have on the right side of that, that picture. Uh, either the gate stuck open or, or was stuck too far open or we had an overflow problem. These are things that you should identify very easily uh, throughout the day uh, during construction. They're easy to fix. We just have to identify them. So in summary, uh, some of the things that, that we need to, to look at here is the design chip spread rate, because like I say, we don't know exactly which source of aggregate that we're going to use. So we're going to start, we're going to look at that design rate, then we're going to adjust that rate on the project based off of the actual aggregates that we're using. We also want to make sure that we're getting a uniform application uh, from our chip spreader. We want to be able to calibrate this chip spreader uh, because it is possible. So you also want to set the chip spreader rate uh, at the start of the project, but check it during production. Uh, couple the calibration of the equipment with good inspection, and you're going to have a quality seal coat program. So I want to thank you for, for watching this video, and hopefully we did give you some tools to help improve the quality of your seal coat program in your district. Thank you again and be safe.